It's clear upon a single viewing of Inglorious Bastards that the standout performance is that of Christoph Waltz, who was aptly recognised as such by the Academy Awards. His innate charisma as a performer surely goes a long way to explaining this accolade, but it's also clear from the film's very first scene, or chapter as Tarantino labels it, that Waltz is able to exhibit a frightening range of styles in a relatively short time frame. What's captivating in this bold opening chapter is how unnerving the character of Colonel Hans Lander is. The character himself is giving a performance to the dairy farmer Perrier Lapadite. It is the odd and transparent facade of friendliness and quirky character traits, contrasted with the cold brutality with which he and the SS are associated, that instill the disconcerting atmosphere. Neither the audience nor Lapadite's family are ever set at ease by the colonel's conventions of good manners, as he simultaneously exhibits a multitude of actions and behaviours to the contrary. From the point of introduction to Lapadite's daughters, notice the lingering stare Lander gives specifically to Charlotte, holding gaze a fraction too long, enough to create an uncomfortable tension. And after Lander requests a glass of milk, he then looks back again at Charlotte, as if to convey an unspoken message of threat. And of course, the grabbing of Julie's arm in order to request said glass of milk can be interpreted as nothing other than an act of intimidation, regardless of the otherwise polite conventions also employed. These actions and behaviours, whilst not overtly violent, have an air of menace to them which slowly ratchets up throughout the scene. For example, there are a couple of times where Lander doesn't stop a line of inquiry when he asks a question and receives a short reply, but insists on Lapadite spelling out his answer in detail to him. Are you aware of the job I've been ordered to carry out in France? Yes. Please tell me what you've heard. I've heard that the Führer has put you in charge of running up the Jews left in France. This doesn't just serve as a line of exposition, but by forcing Lapadite to say these words out loud to Lander in front of him, they become even more terrifying, furthering Lander's dominance over Lapadite. Yeah, they call you the Jew hunter. I understand your trepidation in repeating it. Heidrich apparently hates the moniker the good people of Prague have bestowed on him. Actually, why he would hate the name The Hangman's baffling to me. It would appear he's done everything in his power to earn it. Lander seems entirely genuine and without an ounce of jest when he expresses his bewilderment and his colleagues' dislike to a nickname that has so much violence and disdain associated with it. His pride in his voice when he discusses his own nickname cements the audience's assessment that this character is pure evil. I, on the other hand, love my unofficial title precisely because I've earned it. Further, it is his odd idiosyncrasies, coupled with the aforementioned other behaviour patterns, that cause him to be difficult to fully read by other characters. There is an unpredictability associated with a colonel in the SS, who also causes himself to chuckle over seemingly benign details. Where they can only think like a German. <laughs> More precisely, a German soldier. <laughs> These odd chuckles, especially after the discussion of nicknames, gives the impression of someone truly unhinged. However, it is Tarantino's visual language that signals the major shift in mood of the scene. The director transitions from the mostly static tripod shots to introducing movement to the camera. We sit still for a few moments, just as our characters do, before we slowly circle Lander and Lapadit. This shift in visual language informs us that the tone of the scene is about to head into much more sinister territory. As well as our eyes being told visually that the scene is developing, our ears also get an indication that something may be afoot. The pace of the dialogue slows down, our characters now have shorter sentences, coupled with larger silences in between. This gives the audience fewer distractions so that what we're about to see next can have our undivided attention. As Lapadit recounts Shushana's age attempting to appear calm and unwavering, we slowly descend below the table and beneath the floorboards where the Jewish family are revealed to be hiding. Whilst the scene is still far from reaching boiling point, this reveal signals the ticking time bomb to the audience. Tarantino has turned up the gas on the scene. When Lander begins discussing the searching of a house suspected of hiding Jews, it is presented as almost hypothetical as he holds himself in an informal manner enjoying his second glass of milk. However, the circumstances are telling us loud and clear that there is nothing hypothetical about this discussion. 
Just as Lapadita and the audience are beginning to tense their shoulders, we are given a bizarrely timed comedic moment where Lander pulls out a pipe large enough to match his own eccentricities. On the one hand, this may give a moment of comic relief. On the other, we are far enough along the path of tension that it simply forms another power play by Lander. From this point in the scene, from the push-in camera movement to the subtle development of the performances of both Lander and Lapadit, it now becomes all too clear where we are heading. The unsettling Cheshire Cat smile of Lander now begins to fade and is replaced by a face of sheer menace. I might add also that any information that makes a performance of my duty easier will not be met with punishment. Actually, quite the contrary, it will be met with reward. As Lander presents the two choices of actions that someone harboring enemies of the state has, we can see clearly here through Denis Menachet's delicate performance with his eyes that Lapadite is close to yielding to the colonel, as his expression becomes one of resignation to the inevitable question. You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? Yes. The tension is almost unbearable as Lander's facial expression becomes a thinly restrained mask of rage now that his suspicions are confirmed. The climax of the scene is aided by the terror-inducing shriek-like strings from the score, which serve as a well-earned musical addition to an otherwise music-free scene. This 20 minute opening chapter is superbly crafted and acts perfectly well as its own self-contained short film. An essentially two person scene comprised almost entirely of dialogue is testament to the auteur, but specifically to Waltz and his performance of Hans Lander, whose range of eccentric theatrics are on par with his depths of depravity and evil. 